sometimes we don't even know we're yearning for something different. We just, we might feel something inside that's like, yeah, I need to make a change or things are shifting. I just don't know what. You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 289. And today I've got a special guest sharing how to create pattern interrupting content that actually converts. You ready for this? Let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Get ready to ramp up your revenue, amplify your impact, and make your mark in the world. This is the show for experts, thought leaders, and service professionals who want to shatter their limits and achieve that next level. You're going to find out from other experts and influencers how they made it. Now, let's get Amplified. Hey there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders. It's your host, Melanie Benson, authority amplifier to expert-based business owners. I'm so excited for today's guest. I know I always say that, but I really am. (laughs) I get to interview the most amazing people. I feel so grateful for the extraordinary experts that I get to talk to and share with you. It makes me so excited to find such great talent and hopefully solve the problems that you have. This is one of my favorite things about being a guest on other people's podcasts is it is a powerful way to, first of all, collaborate with other movers and shakers. And secondly, to be able to know that you're solving problems that other people are struggling with. And this is a important ingredient in my framework to add another $125,000 a year to your business. Your guest expert spots should be attracting ideal clients. And if you're using all seven of the steps in my framework, you absolutely should be attracting great clients, enrolling them in your premium offers, and amplifying the reach of your work into new audiences. So you've got a 24-7 lead source of really hot prospects. If that's not the experience you're having, you definitely want to download my seven-step framework right now at amplifywithmelanie.com. Now, let me bring on my guest, and you're going to want to grab a pen and paper and take lots of notes. Welcome back, Amplifiers. I hope you're excited today to get your content standing out by learning how to create pattern interruption in your content. So it's actually converting and attracting your ideal clients. Let me introduce you to a friend of mine, Catherine Thompson. She is a messaging strategist and conversion copywriter based in Canada who inspires people to use their stories as a way to create change in the world. She's an award-winning marketing and communications expert with more than 20 years of experience. After growing one of her businesses to close to a million dollars in sales in less than four years, she sold it with one single email. I did not know that about you. Yes. (laughs) Catherine's now the founder of Creatively owned a marketing and communications firm that helps entrepreneurs use the power of words to create instant appeal for what they're selling. She's a creative rule breaker that's constantly challenging the status quo in an effort to empower others to do the same. So you'll never find her trying to cram you into those annoying cookie cutter, one size fits all marketing and sales strategies. And as a matter of fact, she's dying for you to bust out of them. And I'm learning, I'm experiencing that firsthand. So a little backstory. First of all, welcome, Catherine. Glad you're here. You. Yes. Uh, but uh, this actually worked on me. Like I was running across Catherine's content on Instagram and I reached out and I'm like, loving it. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, can we talk? So, you know, I'm experiencing firsthand everything that she does. And, and I have to say, I'm now using her to help us develop a greater connection with our community through copywriting. So thanks, Catherine. You're welcome. You're welcome. And yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm excited. So I'm just sipping a little tea as we go today. I'm having a power day today with a a whole (laughs) bunch of back-to-back interviews. So if you hear me sipping over the microphone here, uh, I'm enjoying some beautiful teas from my friend Zena Mazika's extraordinary tea company, um, Club Magic Hour. 
And uh, if you do not yet know about her teas, uh, I highly recommend that you check them out. I'll, I'll link them up in the, the show notes, but I wanted to give her a little shout out because uh, uh, she has been super generous to sponsor the PodFest event that I'm speaking at, which Catherine, I know uh, you're getting big in podcasting as as well. And I got to tell you, I was super excited. She donated a whole bunch of teas for our gift bag. So yay, Zena, we appreciate Brilliant. you. Thank you. But I love your teas and I'm sipping them as we speak today. <laughs> so now all about you, Catherine. Yes. What? Let's talk about like this idea of traditional content marketing versus uh, like what you're up to and why is this traditional content marketing not working as effectively anymore? Yeah, great question. You know, it's interesting. Traditional content marketing um, in the past, I don't use use it as much anymore, as you know, is a lot of like teaching and telling and how to and step-by-step processes and why it doesn't work anymore, just like anything when you're inundated with information, which we all are, um, we become numb to it, right? And so in the digital space, especially in the coaching, consulting, online world, we've seen this content over and over and over again. And it worked, it used to work um, until the market became more saturated. And when markets become more saturated, the buyer becomes more sophisticated. They're like, I did the webinar that gave me the four steps five, six, 10 times, I get it now, right? And it's not busting that pattern or luring them in or calling them in or persuading them to want to take the next step. And so there's this shift happening where we have to become more sophisticated with our content. And that's where it's going is it has to interrupt the scroll. Otherwise people are not going to click, they're not going to watch, they're not going to devote their time to learning more about what you do. And so it really, really, really calls for online business owners to create content that really does interrupt that pattern, stop the scroll and gets people to pay attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you, and this is just coming up for me as I'm listening to you speak, like, let's just kind of bring this down into what is an example of traditional content marketing? Yeah. So traditional content marketing would be like five steps to eating a better or five steps to having a, uh, making a better meal or, uh, five steps to creating healthy meals that your kids will actually eat. Right. Mm. You can Google that probably it's probably on Google on somebody's blog. And so that's traditional content marketing, the how to's the teaching, you're going to walk away with five steps to building your business, scaling your business, uh, five steps to writing better content or copy, right? That's traditional content marketing. Where we're going and the pattern shifting that needs to happen is we've got to speak to the patterns that people have, the limiting beliefs, the identities. That's where we need to connect with them because the five steps, the four steps, the teachables, teachable moments, so to speak, people are numb to, and they can Google it. And so when there's a ton of people in the market, if they can Google it, or there's a ton of people out there, they're just going to go, well, why, why wouldn't I work with Melanie instead of Catherine? Why wouldn't I work with Jilly instead of Joe? Right. You just become white noise in the online space. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So Let's talk about something that you and I have had many giggles over, (laughs) which is this idea of content trends. We've got TikTok, we've got Reels, we've got Instagram, we've got all of this stuff. And you and I have both agreed you are not going to catch us dancing on a TikTok video or a Reel, IG Reels. (laughs) So that's what seems to be, quote unquote, trending and growing reach right now. So how does someone go about standing out in a saturated market? Let's say you're in a coach coaching field or uh, you're in some kind of transformational work that there's thousands of people that do something similar. Yeah. And, and we have giggled about it. And, and this is why trends happen with the algorithm, right? Is they want you to play into that so that they show your content more to people. It doesn't mean it's going to the right people. It just means you might get more views. So I always say is like, you don't want to 
you're, you're not about, it's not about views or likes or comments or those sorts of things. But what trends do is they also become same, same. So you can probably scroll on Instagram and there's the same song with a hundred different people doing it, right? It's white noise. Yes, it might be a funny reel or, or a funny dubbed over voice. And, and you might for a minute stop and pause and go, oh, that was funny. But are they remembering you? Right. They're probably not remembering you or they're not because you haven't used those pattern interrupting ways in which you can create right content that gets people to stop in their track and go, what? What did that person just say? Or what are they saying? I don't get it. Like, I, I believe something totally different. So if you want to do reels and, and TikTok videos and all of that, by all means, do that. I think social media is a they're beautiful platforms to grow. We met on social media, we met on Instagram. So I don't want to, you know, talk poorly about the platforms because I think they're really great methods or vehicles to grow your business, but um, you don't have to dance on reels. It's going to be more about the content, the message that you're sharing. That's the thing that's going to attract the right people, which is so important beyond the views and all of that. And I know that I've done some reels and I get a lot of views on them, but they're not necessarily the right people. Right. And so it's like, now, how do I go and create content that really does capture someone's attention and influences them and persuades them on the spot where they're like, I, I remember that person. I remember what they said. They're not just blankly digesting content. (laughs) Yeah. And I would take that a step further, which I I know we're going to talk about is that it's not because the, the trending audios and videos and all that stuff are, are great for the algorithms, but are they actually getting people not just to remember you, but to click through and say, Hey, how do I take advantage of this? Or I'd like to work with you or I, can we talk? Right. And like that they're actually taking an action. And then, yeah. and one of the things you do so exquisitely is the way you write copy is you, and the way you're crafting your content, let's say is your you're talking to that person who has this desire for something that they may not even know. And you're bringing that into the conversation. And that's what I think though we need to do more of. That's the content that pulls me in the most right now. And I think if we, we could talk to the listener right now, uh, and if you're, if you're agreeing with me, like give a little shout out in the comments where you're listening to this, or if you're in Amplify Your Authority, you know, comment on today's post and let us know that, yeah, this is what's up for you too. Like you're, you're yearning for that. Yeah, totally. And it is that oftentimes I say people don't even know they have a problem, right? And that's the problem with limiting beliefs or patterns and we're conditioned whether it's through our family, whether it's society, whether it's the country we live in, we've got this conditioning that we believe in certain things. And so sometimes we don't even know we're yearning for something different. We just, we might feel something inside that's like, yeah, I need to make a change or things are shifting. I just don't know what. And a majority of people don't actually really know what they want. And so traditional content marketing used to just sell the thing, buy my course, buy my offer, buy my product. And that used to work because the market wasn't saturated. But now you need to address where that person is on that journey. And that might be, they have no idea what, what solutions are even available to them. Yeah. 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 Ooh, I'm just getting so excited. (laughs) Yes, I know. (laughs) So what you're really talking about is creating copy, creating content. That's an energetic match for an ideal client. So let's unpack that a little bit. If you don't mind, like I'd love it if you could go underneath the idea and talk about like, how do I do that? Because I think people struggle with this. Yeah. And I love this. This is where I get a little bit wooey because I say that your words are absolutely needed in order to sell what you sell and get people to take action. But there's an energetic presence behind those words. And mainstream marketing is, I always say, sort of like vibrating at a lower energy, right? It plays into a lot of like fear and pain point agitation. And what that ends up doing is attracting those types of clients into your space that are, have a lot of doubt, a lot of fear. And that's cool. Like if that's your market and those are the people you want to serve, then that's the type of messaging and content that you want to use. You might've heard things like 
speak to a grade four level or, um, you know, get really hyper specific with what you're doing. And I think specificity is important, but, um, I often say is I don't want to speak to the grade four level because my audience are like badass entrepreneurs who are highly intelligent people and they're not reading at a grade four level. The grade four level was created for mass marketing when you're selling toilet paper or pens or toothpaste and stuff like that commodities. But a lot of the work and the people that you serve to Melanie is like, they're, they're experts in their own right. They're intelligent people that do amazing work. And so we we don't want to create content and marketing that is vibrating at that low level because those are the people you naturally are going to call in. So if you're wanting to work with high vibe, empowered people that really want to make a change, you've got to elevate that content and speak more to the empowerment of it, raise the vibration of the language we're using, less agitation of pain, less fear, less FOMO, less false scarcity, as I call it, right? Those are a lot of tactics that people have used. Um, and they work. I'm not going to say they don't work because they do, but it's like, those are the types of matches you're going to get energetically with your clients. And so that is the un- sort of the unpacking of that is like, it's more of those empowered, elevated language um, in order to attract your energetic matches. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's so much we could go into around that. And I'll just share on a personal note that um, I personally had to really evaluate the language I was using and the messaging I was using several times over my last 22 years in business, because I found that it would be very easy to write to the client, you know, write content that was attracting clients that loved the work that I was doing, but were not willing to make the investment in the work. And so one of the things that I've had to work very hard on and you've helped significantly around is just recalibrating some of those words that we choose to use or the messaging strategies so that people who who want it and will make the investment in it. And it's subtle, but powerful when you do it. Yeah. And even, and and people might've felt this, right. Is they, they might be using marketing tactics and content and messaging and they, they get people to even buy, right. They might get people to invest and then they get into this group program or this one-to-one work and the client is in a a heightened state of fear and doesn't want to take action and doesn't, isn't motivated or inspired to do the work. Right. And, And it's draining, if you're a go-getter high achiever, right? And I've experienced this in my career as, as attracting people in and the same thing. I had to recalibrate. I was like, I'm attracting people and I'm selling, but I'm not necessarily selling to the right person who is that energetic match to me. And that's because I was using that low vibrational marketing because that's what we've been taught. Yeah. 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 Dead on. Dead on. Yeah. <laughs> Spot on, not dead. Spot, spot <laughs> yeah, on, yeah, spot on. Yeah. <laughs> Better choice of words. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's talk about what pattern interrupt interrupting content is and why it's working better to not just attract, but like get people enrolled. Like, because again, we talked about like we don't want to just like get people. Followers are great, but we need followers to become clients, right? Totally. Totally. And yeah, so pattern interrupting content really is understanding your ideal person's patterns, the patterns that are maybe holding them back, keeping them stuck, maybe knowingly or unknowingly, right? I always use the sleep training coach as an example. I've never had a sleep training coach. So I don't know why this example always always come to me. But, um, you know, if you're a sleep training coach, for instance, and you help moms with newborns get their babies to sleep through the night, If you're selling a package on get your baby to sleep through the night, get your baby to sleep through the night, and there's a mother that has been told her entire life from her friends and other people that babies just don't sleep through the night, she might just expect that her baby's not going to sleep through the night for, you know, the next however many years and not even be looking. So pattern interrupting content is going, okay, her belief is that babies just don't sleep. So why would she buy an offer that's telling me she's going to, they're going to get the baby to sleep through night. She doesn't even believe that that's possible or that's even a thing. 
So the pattern interrupting is calling it out right up front, saying something like, you know, babies are meant to sleep through the night. And a mom who thinks, oh my God, babies don't sleep through the night is going to go, what did this person just say? Or getting your baby to sleep through the night is easy. The mom, the mom's going to be like probably highly triggered going, what? (laughs) This isn't true. That stops the scroll because their pattern subconscious is conditioned to believe this. Mm -hmm. And so they're walking around the earth going, yeah, this is how it is. And then someone puts up something on social that, or wherever, and it just stops them in their tracks. That is how you get people's attention. And then walking them through why this is possible. And then a really good call to action, obviously, to get them to take action. Typically, somebody, a mom whose baby isn't sleeping through the night, and they see this, it's like, oh my God, I need to talk to this person. (laughs) Yeah. 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 That's how it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spring something on you and see if you're willing to do this, but why don't we unpack a couple of my messaging strategies and patterns because you, you know, we talked about this a lot and I love recognizing patterns in people's buying behaviors and in how they make decisions about things. And you help me a lot with this as it comes to my new program, the guest expert system. Yeah. So do you want me to, to tap that first, or do you have an idea of one of the pattern interrupting content pieces we, we addressed? Yeah. Um, I got two in mind. (laughs) Okay. I'll let you go first. (laughs) Okay. Well, first of all, we talked about this already, but one of the most, uh, like great tractions I've got with my content was the comparison between social content and being a guest expert that comparison, would you consider that a pattern interrupting content where we were literally like in people's face saying, Hey, look, social media is getting you this, but what you really want is, is what's possible with pot being a podcast guest. Absolutely. When you can position it with the thing that everybody talks about and everybody sells, get on social, be consistent on social, create social media content. And then you position it beside being a guest expert and someone's not even thinking that's a possibility to grow their business one organically in a lot of ways in a free way, right? It's a really great way to grow your business and attract leads. And they don't even think about it because everyone is so hooked on social media. So it's like a slap in their face, not in a rude, mean way, but it's like, boof, like what? There's other something else I can do. It's ex- that's exactly pattern interrupting. Yeah. Yeah. I will link the, these examples up uh, if we have them available. We definitely have that one available on social. So I'll link that one up in the show notes here. The second one uh, was something I was aware of, but we really flipped the way we talked about it. And that was this idea of being a best kept secret and being invisible. And instead of just focusing on the benefit of like, hey, as a if you really like hone out your guest expert system, you can add $125,000 a year. What we realized was there's a pattern that a lot of people are struggling with. And that is this unresolved fear of being visible and what that means to them, what they have to give up in terms of limiting beliefs to be more visible. Would you consider that pattern interrupting content that we were designing? Totally, because I see this so often with entrepreneurs is they've got this desire to want to grow, scale, all these sorts of things. But like visibility, right, is like, are you able to get through the imposter syndrome or the need to be perfect or to, uh, let's say, being on podcasts, like maybe not stumbling on your words or whatnot, right, is like the fear of actually being seen. So, so many entrepreneurs, I say they fly under that radar, right? They do what they need to do to grow. And then they're just kind of coasting and flying under that radar. And then it's like, are you, are you willing to actually be seen and have your message heard and potentially be judged or whatever, right? Is the whole fear that comes with that. And it's so true as being able to point out that uh, piece, right? Is like uh, one thing that comes to mind is like, um, you know, getting vis art, like getting visible requires you to actually be seen, right? Because some people want that desire it, but it, you actually have to be ready to be seen by the world. Yeah. Yeah. Or heard. Yeah, yeah. totally. Totally. So you have to, you have to come turn face to face with that uh, sab- self-sabotaging behavior of 
if I don't do the things to get on podcasts or other people's stages or whatever it is, then I don't have to worry about someone recognizing, you know, my fear of, of like being more visible or whatever that is. Like some people say it's, there's an imposter syndrome and it, it's a very big part of the conversation that I have when somebody's evaluating guest expert system. Sometimes they're like, I actually think I'm afraid to be seen more. So it, it I think that's part of the pattern interrupting content that you're talking about here is like, how do we recognize the unconscious patterns that they are holding on to that are actually keeping them stuck in the problem? Totally. Totally. Yeah. I love it. Is there yes. anything else that's coming to your mind now that I've opened this Pandora's box that you want yeah, to bring up the, before I shift gears? <laughs> yeah. The, the other one that comes up for me is, is, is actually positioning what the person's doing the identity, right? So if you're, if you're looking at like the invisible coach, let's say, and then the desired identity of where they want to be, if you position those side by side, so you, you did the social media and guest expert, the strategy, right? But you can also do that with the identity of the person of like where they're at, like the plateaued coach is this and list out exactly the things they're struggling with. And this is how to become this person the best, uh, the, you know, the sought after entrepreneur or the go-to expert, right. And then list out that person's identity and what they have. You can then bridge the gap there. People go, Oh, okay. This is what I'm doing in my business. And this is why I'm a plateaued coach or invisible or unheard. And, and then I desire to be the go-to expert or the leading authority. And this is what they have and what they need to do and the actions they're taking. That's mm-hmm. another really cool way to get people to self-identify because when they mm-hmm. self-identify, it's so much easier to um, get them to take action (laughs) because you're not convincing or forcing them to do that, right? You're not like selling, selling, selling on them. They're like, well, I I want this identity. So I'm going to click, where's the button? Where do I sign up? Yeah. Okay. Watch for a really nice content piece coming out soon that has that in it. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. Awesome. So you know, we've talked a bit about the online space and, you know, what's not working and how pattern interrupting content is really needed right now to stand out and, and pull people in. What other shifts do you see happening right now in the online space that we will probably help our listeners do a better job of standing out and attracting clients? Yeah. So, um, a big shift, and we've started to see this and we're, and, and we saw it years ago. So, Two years ago, maybe even three, Instagram, social media was like a highly curated, very perfect world, so to speak, with like overlay pictures and highly edited photos and everyone's grids looked amazing and all of that was all perfectly curated. We started to see a massive shift go away from that, right? People were like, we want real, we want raw, we want authentic. Um, And we're seeing that more now with people's social content, right? Their grids aren't as like, perfect looking and whatnot. The other big shift I'm seeing is more like very distinct differences in content. So we live in a world of like Canva, right? So we can easily go into Canva and create a graphic and that's easily replicated by people. I'm going to, I, my guess is we're going to start to see people get really creative with the way in which they create content. We're going to see people break away from following maybe the trends in the reels, like the the popular songs and all of that. I'm starting to hear a lot of that from my clients that are like, I just don't want to do the dubbed over voices anymore. And I don't want to dance in point. And I'm like, don't. And that's part of what I help my clients do is like, let's create content that is like a full expression of who you are and ditch all of the cookie cutter one size fits all. So I see a massive shift happening there with content that's highly creative, more fully expressed less scripted, less templated. We're seeing lots of people get, want to get rid of the templates and scripts. Um, that's the shift I see happening even more and more. Yeah. So let's just throw those cookie cutters away. Yeah. And, you know, I think the opportunity is, is to dig deeper. And I, again, I hear this all the time with clients who are like, do I, I don't know, do I need a system to be a guest expert? So here's what you're saying is, do I need a system to, really like get content out that's unique to me. I think there's this opportunity to tap into, maybe I won't say this right, but like um, uh, like a way to hone and shape your, your unique message 
but do it in a way that's unique to you so that you're being authentic and you're pulling people in that respond to that on authenticity. Would that be your way to say it? 100%. So creating, and, and I think having a system and structure and all and processes are important, but it's creating one that's authentic and unique to you, like you said, right? So, yeah. so looking at your mentors or your coaches and what they have and what they're teaching, right? But then honing that for yourself, being able to discern, okay, I, I love Melanie's structure here and this is brilliant, but I'm going to add my own flavor into it so that I'm not emulating or replicating. I'm different. Yeah. 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 And, and I think this is something you, you share my passion of, and that is how do you get the best unique expression of your clients, but do it in a way that's getting them better results. Yeah. And that's, that's really where your magic is, is, is helping people identify and connect to in them. Like, what is it that, that is their brilliance? What is it that, that is that thing that makes them stand out in the market and then amplifying it. (laughs) Yeah. uh, We can use my brand word, but (laughs) amplifying the reach of that because they're, they're really understanding this pattern interrupt process, which you are so brilliant at. So, so Catherine, you have a quiz that I I think is brilliant. at at giving people this first taste of how this all works. Can you share a little bit about your quiz and how people can find it? Yeah. So my quiz, I am so passionate about this creation because it honestly is the most thoughtful, comprehensive thing I've produced in the online space uh, over my career. It's so amazing. The results pages are so amazing. You can find it at creativelyowned.com backslash quiz. But essentially the quiz is how to own and tap into your unique energy expression and how to be able to amplify that to the world. So the results are so detailed that the feedback we've got is like, you're, I, I read this and thought you were like, wrote it specifically for me. And I've had people say like, I finally feel like I have permission to market and sell my business in a way that feels good to me that I don't need to follow all of the cookie cutter approaches. So it is one of the, it's amazing quiz. You've got to take it. If you want to become that sought after entrepreneur it really is about owning that unique, your unique edge um, and standing out in the online space in that capacity. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. creatively owned.com forward slash quiz. So I like to ask my guests some things about their journey just to make sure people know you're human. Yeah. <laughs> we all, we all have our growth challenges and opportunities. Uh, what would you say is the boldest thing you've had to do to amplify the reach of your business? Yeah, the boldest thing that I had to do, I all kind of maybe go through this, but it was like, honestly, ditching the cookie cutter, doing it my own way and finding my voice in the online space. I worked 15 years in corporate. I ditched that to own, open a custom winery, which is brick and mortar, a local business where we produced wine. So I wasn't, I was online, Facebook, Instagram, but in a very different capacity, I entered the online space and it was like, almost like I hit a brick wall because I had, I didn't know how to express my voice uniquely because I was afraid. I was afraid of judgment. I was afraid of imposter syndrome. So about three years ago, I was like, I'm done. I'm exhausted. I am I need to just say what I want to say <laughs> and how I want to say it. Um, and so that's probably the boldest is like releasing the expectation that I needed to follow anybody else's processes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that is a bold moment when you're like, okay, I don't have to like follow cookie cutters. I, I can find my own unique way. Yeah. Um, yeah, not all not everyone is brave enough to do that. And I think it's indoctrinated into so many of us that you need to follow a proven process, which then kind of makes us like fall prey to like sounding like everybody else. So totally, <laughs> but, totally. Yeah. 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 What is one thing you wish you would have done sooner? Probably. So it's interesting because when I entered into the online space, it's almost like I forgot the 20, the 15 years of experience I had or 20 years of marketing experience. And I started to look at everybody else to tell me what I needed to do. I wish I would have just trusted myself enough when I entered the online space 
then to just do it my own way, because I think I struggled for a couple of years there, two years for sure, just kind of spinning my wheels, making sales and stuff like that. But it was, it felt very hard. Um, so I think it would have just been a lot more self-trust in my own ability coming into the online space and that mm. the things that popped up as like, well, oh, that doesn't really feel right. Or I don't really like that method or like, why do we do it that way? Um, full scarcity, FOMO, creating FOMO, agitating the pain, like none of that ever felt really that great to me, but the people I was learning from were like, this is how you do it. And so I was like, okay, I'll follow it. And then, yeah, so I would have changed that. I would have come in a lot more braver and bold, but I think I needed to go through that to come out the other end of it. Yeah. Do you think you might identify yourself as a bit of a movement leader here and the, you can ditch all that old school uh, marketing hypey stuff and creating something that feels so much more aligned for so many of us? 100%. I feel that more now when I launched my podcast, not even a year ago now, Be the Sought After Entrepreneur, that was the mission and is the mission I'm on is to really ditch the cookie cutter and to give people permission to just show up as themselves. I think that is the most empowered thing that we can do. And so that's the mission that I'm on. Yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I was I hoping you're going to bring up your podcast because, and it's the last question. I got to ask this. It was going through my head and I'm like, no, we don't have time. I'm like, no, I have to ask yes. it. Yeah. What with all the different platforms, you, you know, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, podcasting, everything that you do, what would you say is your favorite platform? Not just because of the results, but what is possible when you you're authentically you on that platform? Yeah. So podcasting probably is my most favorite. And the reason being is because whether I have a guest on that I can just like riff with and connect with, I absolutely love that. And it's like a two-way conversation, which really gets me excited that there's like a human connection there. Um, But I also love just sitting in my office and riffing on what's coming up for me and being able to share in that capacity. I also think when people can hear me, I know you can hear me in stories and stuff like that. Um, Instagram would be a close second just because I feel really drawn to Instagram and I've always loved going on there and creating content for there. But my podcast by far is um, a really big passion of mine. And I, and being able to connect with people, all the different guests that have come from all walks of life. I just absolutely love it. So yeah. 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 I I love podcasting and I love being a guest on people's podcasts. Like it's just, I think the connection we can build through podcasting is taking it's taking things to a whole nother level. So I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you said that. Yeah. <laughs> I actually thought you would say Instagram, but I love, I love your answer even better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, make sure you go take Catherine's quiz at creativelyowned.com forward slash quiz. And I would love to hear what did you learn about yourself when you took the quiz? Uh, if you are not in the Amplify Your Authority Facebook community, come join us and uh, we'll have a thread for today's episode where you can share what you discovered by taking Catherine's quiz. So Catherine, thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm so grateful for the work you're doing in the world. Like you are going to help so many people, not just get their problems solved in the world and achieve their goals, but you're going to actually help more change makers be successful in their business. So thank you. Yes. Thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in today, Amplifier. Be sure to join us right now in the Amplify Your Authority community at authorityamplifiers.com and I'll share my seven proven tips to be a highly paid expert that stands out in a crowded market. Plus, we're going to keep this conversation going and I want to hear from you how you're going to amplify your authority and make a greater impact. Before you go, please take a minute to give our show and our guests some love over on your favorite podcasting platform. Subscribe, rate, and review. Leave your full name and I'll spotlight you and your authority on social media. 